Now, have we got a treat for you now? Let me introduce you to Len McCluskey's Little Red Book. Uh, well, actually, maybe more burnt sienna, uh, in which the boss of one of Britain's biggest trade unions reflects on his personal journey from the Liverpool docks to, well, arguably, the most powerful man in the Labour Party after the leader and the General Secretary of Unite the Union, Len McCluskey, joins us now. Mr McCluskey, very good morning to you. Good morning, Neil. Um, there was a wonderful quote I was going through, the introduction to your book last night, in fact, uh, Mr McCluskey, and it says this, I sincerely hope that by the time why you should be a trade unionist reaches bookshops, that this nation has achieved a lasting, credible settlement, one that heals our divisions and gives hopes of a fairer future for all the people of this country. Now, that was written in November. What went wrong in December? Well, obviously, uh, Labour suffered a major, major defeat. Uh, primarily, as far as I'm concerned, because of Brexit. Uh, the more we slid in to be perceiving, uh, perceived as um, a Remain party, the more the consequences were going to be felt in our heartlands. Uh, many of those seats that we've lost, virtually all of them, uh, voted leave. And uh, there was a feeling of betrayal. The Labour Party had betrayed them, and we suffered the consequence. Now, some of us were telling uh, the leadership that, and we've been telling them that for many, many months, but uh, uh, that's the position and we have to dust ourselves down, choose a new leader and move on to win back the trust of those heartlands, but indeed the rest of the nations as well. Uh, and indeed, Unite has come out uh, for Rebecca uh, Long-Bailey and uh, Richard Bergen. Um, there are those who see this as, as almost continuity Corbyn, and given the fact that two general elections have been lost in that vein, what is the rationale for those choices? Well, I don't believe it's fair on Becky to talk in terms of continuity Corbyn. She's her own individual. People will see she's strong, courageous, brave. She's certainly capable and she's able to take forward her vision. It will be her vision. She believes in uh, the radical nature of Labour's policies and it's up to her now, indeed whoever becomes leader, the challenge is to take those arguments back out to the nation. You say that we've lost two elections, of course, two and a half years ago in 2017, Labour came within touching distance of power with yeah, but, a radical manifesto. But, but you went back manifesto. from that point though, it's, it, it strikes me that, that the part of the problem the Labour Party has at the moment is that 2017 is often talked about, 2019 rarely. I mean, the Conservatives outperformed Labour by double digits amongst manual workers and households that earn jointly less than, than £20,000. Yeah, I think, as I've just said, that was virtually solely down to Brexit. Labour's policies, and there are those on the right of the party and indeed in the media, who were trying to suggest that uh, it was the policies, Corbyn policies, were rejected or, overwhelmingly by the population. Or indeed I Corbyn I the man, that. surely, Mr McCluskey, or indeed Corbyn the man. I mean, you say that Rebecca Long well, Bailey has, has the brains and the brilliance to take on Boris Johnson, and I love the alliteration, but it does also suggest that Jeremy Corbyn didn't have the brains and the brilliance. <laughs> No, I think the reality, and if I have to keep repeating this, then you'll have to forgive me. Uh, two <laughs> years ago, Jeremy Corbyn, Jeremy Corbyn was loved. What happened in the last two years? Brexit and Labour's inability to effectively stay with their 2017 uh, manifesto position of respecting the 2016 referendum and arguing to take uh, Labour uh, and the country out of Europe, but on a deal that protects jobs and investment. That got lost in the two years, and uh, that affected how people perceived Jeremy as, as a leader, and we paid the consequences for that. But the policies that Labour stood for, and the policies, a number of them, that Rebecca Long-Bailey supports, are extremely popular amongst the electorate. Now, Brexit is gone. Obviously, we'll still have lots of talk between now and the end of the year as this government tries to cut appropriate trade deals and I wish them luck on that, although I have my uh, severe concerns about what might happen. But Brexit is gone. By the time the next election comes about five years or if it's earlier than that, the issues will then be about what affect ordinary working people. And that's when Labour's radical alternative to the type of society we have will kick in. 
Okay, okay, um, let me beg you, Mr. Mr. McCluskey, I'm going to interrupt because we are going to run out of time. We are going to run out of time, but anti-Semitism, allegations of anti-Semitism within the Labour movement were clearly also part of the reason that Labour didn't perform uh, to some people's expectations, which does rather make the, part, the union's nomination, uh, the union support for Richard Bergen slightly strange. If Wes Streeting calling for him and, in fact, Don Butler to be ruled out of the deputy leadership contest because they refuse to sign up to the Board of Deputies, clause, uh, Board of Deputies recommendations on anti-Semitism. Well, that, that's not a nonsense, of course. Wes Streeting would say that, wouldn't he? The fact of the matter is that both Dawn and... Well, the Board of Deputies would say it as well. <clears throat> both Dawn and Richard have made it clear that they believe that there is a need for more debate and discussion about a couple of the points that are in the Board of Deputies' 10 pledges. Most of them are fine, but a couple of them need further consideration. I think that's perfectly legitimate, and for people to call for them to be kicked out of the race is utter nonsense. Um, another line um, from your book, you can tell I'm a voracious reader, uh, Mr McCluskey, but another line from your book that leapt out at me, we should be more prepared to challenge the law rather than accepting that, that, that certain actions are illegal. Which aspects of the law is it that you're referring to there? And are you yourself personally willing to lead illegal strikes? Well, of course, the truth of the matter is the type of legislation that has been introduced by consecutive Tory governments is to try to minimise the effect of trade unions. And all I'm looking for, all I've been looking for for a while, is for British workers to be treated uh, as fairly as all the workers in the rest of Europe. We were the ones, this nation, who defeated fascism and gave Europe all of the freedoms that they currently have. How is it possible that German workers and Italian workers and French and Dutch and all the rest of them. Well, Mr. Be specific, be specific. Which laws? Which laws would you challenge? The laws about uh, the thresholds, if you've got an, a, a situation where uh, thresholds are not met, but uh, workers still wish to take uh, industrial action, then they should be allowed to do that. The reality is that I said to David Cameron, I've said to uh, Theresa May, and I'll say it to Boris Johnson, allow us to have workplace uh, uh, branch meetings and votes, workplace votes, and you can have as many, uh, as many thresholds as you like. The, the postal thresholds are notorious for turning out low uh, low turnouts and that is just wrong and undemocratic and if they gave us proper workplace um, ballots which of course both Boris and Theresa May had then we would have a situation whereby uh, thresholds were perfectly uh, legitimate to accept but trying to kind of force workers with some technicality workers who have a grievance that they cannot take industrial action is plain wrong to me and I think we should be prepared to stand up and stand shoulder to shoulder with our members. Len McCluskey, always good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Neil.